I'm going down to the library, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Gonna say hi to the dictionary, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Some books. You Some know, dogs? I got, I got, yeah. Got your little doggy friend with, with Wolfie. <laughs> you know, I got that new puppy. Yes, who's very sassy. Very sassy. It's been 19 years since I've had a puppy, so I thought I would come into the old nonfiction area, the 636 area. Of course, you know, have you done? Have you read any of the books here? Okay. Not that he's a puppy. Ones, I saw that I don't have a puppy right now. I saw this one on TV. His Nat Geo, How to Raise the Perfect Puppy. This is like Mr. President. I don't remember this one's name. So I think I'm gonna give this a whirl because he's. I like the way he approaches things. You know, to be calm and to create that environment. So How to Raise the Perfect Dog, Caesar Milan. Isn't give... there a really cute puppy one in there? Well, this is the one I'm struggling with. <laughs> House training House... for dummies. Oh, that scout. She's okay. I'm gonna give that one a whirl. Um, puppy, you said? Yeah, I know there's some really cute puppy, puppy ones. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, look at this. I love James Harriet. He's got dog stories. I know. I loved him. All creatures, great and small. New dog. I wonder if I should look at that one. Choosing wisely and ensuring a happily ever after. Too late. I have my dog. <laughs> Hey, have you ever read her books? Who? Patricia McConnell. No. She's from Wisconsin. Well, oh, she's not from Wisconsin. She practiced in Wisconsin. Is she a dog trainer? She is a dog behaviorist. She is awesome. She's the, like, people would bring like the worst of the worst of the worst dogs to her. Mm -hmm. But she um, herself had the herding dogs. So I'm going to say border collies. Okay. And. The way that she encourages you to just look at the, the nature of the dog versus trying to make the dog something it's not allows you to get the dog that you wanted. Kind of that way. Okay. Maybe I'll reread this one, The Other End of the Leash, because it is. 90% of the dog is what's well, at the end of the leash. Well, maybe I should try some of those with Tucker, too, because you know how sassy he is. <laughs> House training. There you go. Look at that little fluffer. Oh, that little fluffers. Boy, we got a lot of books in here. We do have lots of I guess I, I've never looked until now because of the puppy. Yeah. I'll be busy. Yes, you will. All right. I'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs>
I love that. It's so personal. That's nice. Um, I did. I saw that on your website, but I just thought it was a cute story that everybody should know. <laughs> um, okay, so how did you end up here in New Holstein? Um, I followed a boy, and uh, that's pretty much uh, how I ended up here. Um, but it's been great. I think I've been here for 19 years, something like that. Um, I'm married. I have oh. two kids. Okay. Very involved. So your your husband is from here? Um, he actually originally grew up in Chilton, um, and then when oh. we got married, he moved to New Holstein. I see. I see. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so where, what is your favorite thing? You've been here 19 years. You must have favorites in town. What's your favorite thing to do or community place to eat, um, place to visit? Um, well, like I mentioned, we've been very involved in the community. I'm a first responder. My husband's a firefighter. Um, we both oh, used to great. coach softball in town here. So, of course, we <laughs> like going down to the ballparks all summer and spending time down there. Um, when we go for walks, we actually live outside of town, but we'll come into town and go for walks through the park and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Family favorite of ours is going to Corner Kitchen. It's kind of like where my kids want to go or the village. Do you have your regular orders as well? Um, well, usually my kids are having their waffles or their pancakes. Um, we usually do breakfast when we go there too. Um, yeah, but yeah. it kind of varies. Yeah, I um, we had a restaurant in our hometown that was my favorite. I always had pancakes, and I don't remember, but apparently as a toddler, I once cried when they wouldn't serve me pancakes. We went in a time they weren't serving breakfast, and when they wouldn't serve me pancakes, I cried, and then they ultimately made them for me, and, you know, just carried that entitled attitude through life. I, you, you can always have pancakes if you just cry. No, um, yeah. You know, it's funny, you're the first, I've heard the parks a lot, and definitely, you know, um, uh, a couple of the restaurants, but nobody had mentioned the ballpark. So that's a cool one, because I think, I like, really love what they're doing there. I think that uh, a ballpark in a small town really promotes a sense of community. So that's a cool one. I love that. Yeah. Do you have to help your customers? I'm sorry. Is somebody over there? <laughs> We're good. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Otherwise, I would certainly we could certainly pause. But um, okay. So we we talk uh, talked briefly right before we got on here, and we were speaking about how COVID has affected your business, and I was really interested in that. So I was wondering if you'd like to talk about that a little bit. Um. So we were closed down for almost two months, um, which was definitely very challenging. Um, closed totally. Here. Like yes, closed totally. Um, okay. So it's some really uncertain times right now. We weren't really sure what was going to happen. Um, the community has really been great though since we picked back up. Um, had a ton of new customers come in. Um, we still hear daily. I didn't know that you were even here. Um, unfortunately, ah. we don't have very good signage or um, stuff to say where we are, but they've been great. Um, picked back good. up and it seems like people are going out of their way to try to. Long. Yeah. We also started making as well, so. Yeah, that brings up two questions for me, to, if you don't mind. Um, the first is, um, I can't remember my first question. Hopefully, I'll come back to it. My my second question, maybe I'm just so excited about this one, is um, if you have something odd that you've printed on masks maybe if it wasn't like too personal do you, do you have any like weird requests for masks i love the idea of personalized masks um i've had different types of requests um we've had some people who unfortunately have had to like go to funerals and stuff and there might be special mm -hmm. things that maybe the person who passed um really liked so they've asked that we put like that item on the mask so that they can had I a lot love of, that. Yeah, um, we've had a lot of kids where, you know, obviously the younger ones are really struggling with wearing masks. So, mm -hmm. um, and asked if we could put chicken dinosaurs with the kids' names on them so that um, the kids may be more excited about wearing them, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Obviously, we have our huskies and chicken tigers and raider masks that are very popular. 
um, just we had some nice, um, like faith masks that we've done, peace masks, a lot of American flags, we've done a lot of green flags, or divine flags that people were asking for. Um, we have had some political masks that people have been asking for. Those I, uh, yeah, some of those were expected. That funeral one to me is so yeah. outside the box and interesting um, because, yeah, it is, I would say, such, a, like you said, we're in a, a difficult and uncertain time. And so some of those th little tiny things, I think, that have come yeah. out of coronavirus where, you know, people discovering you or people trying to have more connection to the like personal aspect, maybe. Be, it feels so impersonal when your face yes. is covered and you don't get to be with one another and people can't attend funerals. So what a neat way to still try to personalize it. And so, yeah, that's cool. I mean, sad and cool. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. Um, Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, so I have pretty personal questions now. Uh, and I ask everybody these, so don't worry. Uh, if you could have a meal with anyone from the past or present, uh, who would it be? And what would you sit down and eat? You Obviously, uh, you sent me a list of questions that you might ask me. And this one I have really, really struggled with. And last night, as we were driving in the car, I was talking to my family about it, and my youngest daughter, who is right away, jumps up and she's like, Mom, that's easy. And I'm like, It is? I'm like, Because I've been struggling all day. And she's like, well, You should ask, or you should sit down with Jesus. And like, my heart just melted, and I was like, Oh, that was really sweet. I'm like, Well, what would we eat? She's like, Bread and wine, Mom, duh. <laughs> oh, that's like, awesome. Hey, she's like, How about George Washington? I'm like, Okay, we could do that. I don't know. Me personally, I think I think sitting down with anybody from like the Civil War and just kind of having because right now I almost feel like our country is in kind of the same mindset as maybe they were back then. Like friends and neighbors are against each other and everything is so uncertain. Right. So I would kind of right. like to sit down with somebody from there and just see how they were getting through it. Um, and maybe that helped right. us. Oh, no. Right. I, history holds the answers. I mean, we are we always just kind of repeat behaviors and situations. And so I love that. I think a couple of people have hit on certain like um, t overtones of what's ha or undertones, I guess, of what's happening in with our current situations and wanted exactly that, like wanted to go back and seek answers. How do we fix this? How do we come back together as friends and neighbors? And um, once again, like humanize some of our interactions, I guess. I, that, so yeah, it, I, I wonder who the, that's the hard part is like, you know, like, like maybe a historian who studied the Civil War would have more insight than somebody yeah. who lived it. I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. That's the hard part. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I don't mean to cause you, di I, I'm glad, I love that it pro like pro prompted a discussion with your family. I don't mean okay. to cause strife by asking these questions. Um, but it, it, I'll, if I'm honest, I don't even have an answer for it or my answer may change week to week. I really yeah. also don't, I don't know. There are so many things I'd want to know. So I don't know who I could, pinpoint is who I'd like to sit down I with. I love the Jesus answer. That's a good. What an insightful 13 year old. You know, I know. I was, I was pretty happy when she said that. Yeah, that's cool. Well, if anything, at least you got to have that discussion with your family. I love it. Sure. Um, my final question. See, this is easy breezy. My final question is, what's your favorite book? Um, so I don't get to read nearly as much as I want to. Because when I sit down with a book, I can't stop. Um, so I really mm -hmm. have to time out when I have time to sit down and read a book. But usually, yeah. I tend to go more towards like these Amish novels, kind of, and I'm not really sure why. Oh, yeah. But like Linda uh -huh. Costello is um, probably mm -hmm. one of my favorite authors. She has a series called the Kate Bertholder series, and I really enjoy it. It's just kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I, I no, I get that. I 
I love historical fiction, and I think because some of it, um, I think the appeal of the Amish stuff is sometimes it's all like, all the external stuff is stripped away, and you're like, it's people, and um, sometimes their inner thoughts. I I don't think I don't feel like some of those are as plot driven as they are character driven. So yep. ma maybe that's I I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to pinpoint what it is, but I am familiar with, and we have in this library actually a pretty large collection uh, where we categorize it as Christian fiction, but there's all, tons of Amish stuff that's wildly popular this last, I'd say decade really. Yeah. So, and new authors kind of coming into that genre more and more. So that's sure. cool. Hey, Vicki, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you neglecting. I know that they were taking care of your customers for uh, this little bit and sitting down with me. I thank you so much. And I'm yes. going to think of something yeah, no problem. I'm going to think of something crazy to have you put on a mask for me. I don't know what yet, but. <laughs> okay, we can do that. Awesome. Thank you, Vicki. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts called Dolly Parton's America. And I know that's kind of a non-traditional favorite since we have really been highlighting some of the materials we have here in the library. But this is more a plug for one of our services. Um, and that is that we will do tech tutoring. So I am a huge fan of podcasts. I It's kind of like radio. Uh, frequently you'll have like these episodes that you listen to and you download them to your phone. And what I love about it is there's almost like this intimacy to listening through headphones to somebody that it feels like they're talking straight to you. And um, I've never found myself a fan of audio books per se. But podcasts, for some reason, it's just such wonderful storytelling, and I feel that they're produced so well. Uh, one I listened to this last year was called Dolly Pardons America, and it's done by one of my favorites, WNYC Studio. And uh, I think what I loved about it is I had never really been a fan of country music or Dolly Parton for that matter uh, growing up I mean I obviously knew of her music and I liked some of her music but I listened to this podcast um, they sort of took an, a really close look at Dolly Parton's life and her music and how her music just connects to world music all over the world and why people of every um, demographic connect to her music and why it doesn't matter which way you vote or which way um, uh, you spend your money or anything like everybody loves Dolly Parton and why is that and that's what this podcast is I think six or seven episodes it's not enough it was amazing um, it just explores some of those ideas and I was hooked after the first episode and I now love Dolly Parton and I listen to her music completely differently. So uh, if you want to check out Dolly Parton's America or any podcasts, I can give a ton of recommendations. I've listened to all of them, not all of them, but a lot. Um, please, please call the library and set up a tech tutoring. I can help you download an app onto your phone and we can uh, get some different podcasts that you might like onto that app and I can teach you how to use it. It's always very simple um, and it makes, I think personally, like I love to drive. Sometimes I sit in my car waiting to finish an episode because I'm so excited about what I'm listening to. So yeah, give us a call at the library anytime you want any kind of tech tutoring, um, but I'm specifically plugging uh, helping you find podcasts, discover the amazing world of podcasts. So thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.